Looks like we're live. It does. Good afternoon. Hi, Good Nick. afternoon. Hi, Henry. Thanks welcome. for having me. Yeah, welcome. So, I'm Nicky T. I am joined today by no less than Henry Hopking from the Brain Training Company. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We are here to do a live Q&A on YouTube. YouTube there, Facebook there, simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, if you've come for the eye contact seminar, you will be disappointed because we will forget which screen to look at and we will probably get obsessed with one screen and ignore the other. But we will do our best to keep up with the comments on both pages and introduce, discuss, digest the topic of mental performance. We'll do our best. We will. We'll try and put a good performance on. We, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll do our best. Now, to give you guys a bit of background, I met Henry in December 2012, having um, been introduced by a mutual friend in shotgun shooting. Yeah. And with the sole aim of enhancing my mental performance and, you know, improving my scores, competing to a higher standard, etc., etc. And we got there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, You're yeah. You're a good athlete. Can't polish a turd, but <laughs> Henry did, did manage to add glitter. So, <laughs> yeah, it was, um, we did get there. And what, you know, obviously my background prior to shotgun shooting was paintball, mm. is paintball, you know, in the, the all-consuming ball and, you know, has led this, created this wonderful life. Um, so many of Henry's, so much of Henry's advice and his teaching is transferable to paintball. And really, I've been on a quest for probably the last four or five years. It's like a knight on a horse. And, <laughs> I wish I had a horse. To try and extrapolate that information in a digestible form for paintballers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whilst it's not a case of here it is currently, the first stage of this process now is to introduce the subject matter and discuss it to greater depth, you know, and, you know, how it can apply to paintballers in general. Not, and I think one of, you know, one of the myths that I want to bust, explode, get out of the way early on is this isn't just for the elite yeah. performers yeah and I think um, looking historically back on this and firstly thanks for having me on here and very welcome just uh, anyone that's there give us a little thumbs up that you can hear us and we're not just talking to ourselves we can actually see people that's right? great yeah um, so 20 years ago I started in this field and actually I, one of the sports I started in was working with um, professional rugby and I remember I was speaking to this old chap, this older boy from a sort of previous generation of rugby players and absolutely dismissed the requirement for mental training. And this is going back into the sort of late 90s, I suppose. This is probably when rugby players still smoked in the dressing room. Absolutely. Right, okay. Bot bottle of port at half time. Right, yeah. fantastic. But it was, that was interesting. And now, of course, we see professional rugby. We went through, we won the World Cup, um, so 2002, 2003. Um, and then in other sports as well, where I've seen the professionalism or the 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 edge, which is one of my programs, is get the mental edge, is sure. how it does give you that edge. So we met each other through competitive um, sporting plays, which is shotgun shooting, and that even then the sport was still not really embracing the area of the mental side. You were one of the er earlier people. And, now we're looking at paintball, and this is what's really exciting: is it's a it's another sport which can now start to get that edge and to yeah. look to accept that actually there are ways that you can have that edge over your competitors through other forms of training. I think we're aware of gym training, nutrition, the mental training, which is a little bit mystical to some people. And I really want to cut through a lot of the the smoke and mirrors that actually it is very tangible in what you can do, and how it's not just on your technical game and with your equipment you can get that edge on your competitors through the mental training and i've seen this trend i've worked in many different sports but through professional rugby professional golf tennis golf and tennis have probably been the two sports which have adopted mental training um, the most right um and uh, and obviously it's great to come along here and talk talk more on and and how we can introduce the world of paintball to how you can improve your game as well 
what's your background in paintball to date? To date? Yeah. Some time, days out with you. Okay. It's very limited. I mean, enjoyment factor start, 100. Start, start at the top. Yeah, absolutely. It's actually... I'm, so, enough I'm about prob- your best time in paintball. <laughs> Probably the very first time I came across paintball was actually where many people might have come across it was actually a stag party in the woods, end of the day, wearing a boiler suit, hurting a lot. Yeah, I, I mean, paintball, paintball probably wouldn't be the business entity it is if people didn't get married. So <laughs> so that's probably where it started. And then um, through our discussions over the years, I'm always fascinated about different areas uh, which can benefit from mental training. You invited me out to a tournament. I forget the name of what it was, but I came Did along we? to a weekend. Yeah, we went um, to the Millennium Series in yeah, that's right. yeah. London. Yes, right? yes. And so seeing that and seeing you operate with a team and seeing the dynamics of different teams, not just as individuals. So it's, it's very limited. But what I do say is we all have a brain. That's the one thing we all have in common. And it's not just about your mental performance in paintball or in golf or, or at work. We all ca- we, it's not something we switch on at that moment in time. It's how we actually um, control our brain, whatever that environment might be. So it's not just the paintballer's brain. It's the brain that we all have and understanding. And one of the things for us to talk about today is actually building your awareness. Absolutely. How you, and how you feel. So we can get, we can get into that a bit, a bit later. But I really hope that we can, any questions that come through, get rid of any of the myths of what the mental side to sport is give some clarity and give some tips and so everyone gets to go away with uh, some things from here and uh, lots of lots of people coming in and joining us here yeah it's great to see um and uh, i won't comment Li- liam does have a brain for the record andy so um just to just to clarify whichever platform you guys are watching this whether it's facebook or my youtube if you do have comments or questions please you know now's the time send them in you know henry is someone who if you wanted to book his time, it's, it's not just a walk in off the street process. It's a very planned, you know, book in advance. You know, Henry's availability is severely limited. So I, I consult to um, four, four Olympic teams at the moment around the world on the athletic side, as well as individuals. And so the GB, the US and, and a couple of others. And then... Um, Away from that, I work in high pressure situations as well. So, like working with me, it's incredibly stressful. Yeah, um, I need a good mental game. Um, I've worked in the Middle East in um, high pressure situations out there, special forces, um, air traffic control is probably one of the one of the most stressful environments I've worked into. Then corporate environments, uh, investment banking, trading floors. So as I said earlier, it's not just about your paintball brain; it's how we apply that. I think um, we all have areas of stress within our brain and I remember once I was in an extreme example working with someone who had just been doing bomb disposal in Afghanistan and it was a very very stressful situation and I was always quite overwhelmed by how stressful that was and he said well he also gets very very stressed about what we would consider regular situations it's about your training another example being within sporting clays I was working with someone that was a so he's throwing this little plane around in the sky, oh, okay. incredibly stressful. Uh, yet you put a shotgun into his hands for competition, yeah. like a bag of nerves. Really? So it's to do with your training wow. and what okay. you're used to. And I think one of the things for those that are perhaps new into paintball is don't be intimidated by your first few competitions that you go to. That uh, it's part of the process of getting through and understanding what, what that, that environment is like as well. That uh, I think the first time you go to these big events it can be daunting and you feel nervous but it's um just put yourself out there and that's that's one of the important things you've been to over the years and generations and decades that you've been doing yes. this. not that i'm aging you yeah no no i am old. but it yeah. is about the experience it that is. you have that you probably don't yeah. feel as, as intimidated by some events as someone that is new to the sport there's certainly a lot that we take for granted and you're you're very correct in what you say you know i don't think twice about going to any paintball site in the world and just you know gear bag on the table starting to get ready to play mm. whereas for others it's you know they don't want to make a mistake of putting the gear bag in the wrong place or sure. you know sat in the wrong area etc so to start getting hey, can i just follow on from that yeah. what's in my head is that sure. a number of people say how they they really worry about their nerves and they feel all this adrenaline coming through yeah don't be fearful of that actually adrenaline is a good thing and almost that it's 
it's only bad when it's when it's detrimental to your performance. Right. Don't be fearful of the fact of feeling nervous, if okay. that makes sense. Okay. It's entirely no, normal. Is... One of my very top athletes, he's physically sick before he competes. <laughs> and we could never solve this. And I said to him, you know what? The day that you're not sick is the day we need to be nervous because it doesn't mean anything to you. So don't be worried about the fear. I think people don't like that that feeling of adrenaline. That actually can be a great yes. thing. And part of with the mental training is actually to have awareness of that's how I feel. I wake up. As long as you are in your processes during the day, you wake up, you go to the tournament, I feel yeah. my adrenaline, I feel a bit nervous. You may be someone that gets a bit of a shake. Sure. That's part of you. Don't try to say, I don't want to be nervous unless it's detrimental to your performance. I guess the reality is unless you're one of the minority of paid professional paintballers, your day job isn't playing paintball. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having a paintball marker in your hands mm -hmm. and shooting at people isn't the nine to five mm -hmm. for most. So, you know, it's not the norm. But you'd put some of the professional paintballers into the, the other person's nine to five and they would also then feel nervous in that. So, of course, it's different situations. It yeah. is the unknown. And yeah. I, I like what you said that you, when you first arrive, you don't know exactly where to put your bag. Absolutely. It's the new boy at school, the new girl at school. Uh, it's putting yourself out there through through the situations. And yeah. one of the things I want to talk about during this is actually the, the preparation you can do beforehand of understanding what to expect, what's going to happen in a competition weekend. Sure. And it's actually thinking ahead and going through the planning of where will my team be. I mean, I've known at, at some events that we actually go onto Google Earth on the satellite imagery and we look at the layout, whatever, you know, it could be a golf course and say, this is your hotel. This is where the clubhouse is, and okay. this is where the first tee is. This is how you're going to drive, unless you have you have a driver, and you map it out. I mean, some of us do have a driver, but it is it's it's a lot of it is in the planning. A lot of the nerves come from because you you, the you you're, well, and you're creating the mm. unknowns in your head. But sure. if you understand, could you go online and look at some YouTube videos of previous events? How are they managed? How are the the team stations managed? How how does how do the team talk about how do the team to have all their bags and kit laid out beforehand. Yeah. yeah. What are the processes? You'll very quickly get through that. But don't the point I'm trying to make here is don't be fearful of the nerves unless it's detrimental to your performance. Actually, the nerves can make you attentive to a good performance. Now, ahead of today, we've had some questions submitted already. Before we get into those, can we just clarify what is mental performance? Wow. That's a good definition. How do we define that? So my yeah. field, if we're going to get complicated, my field is called psychophysiology. I'll translate. Brains and body. Well done. Yeah, there we go. So I look at the interaction between the brain and the body. Okay. So I'm not on the psychology side. Typically people talk about psychology and maybe they'll look at visualization and the confidence side. I'm looking at how you're using your brain in a measurable performance. So okay. mental performance in my world is how you're using your brain. So it's, it's looking more at the neurology rather than the psychology. Right. The measurable side. So I use equipment to, um, to uh, actually measure brainwave activity. And your brain operates at different speeds. When you get very stressed, your brain operates at a faster speed. When uh, you go to sleep at night, your brain slows right down. Yeah. And throughout the day, we move between those two different boundaries. So mental performance for me is, or optimal mental performance, is the conscious control of the optimal mental state for that moment in time. Okay. Bit of a mouthful. Okay. But within psychophysiology, so I'm actually looking at the physiology. Typically, a classic thing is people try to concentrate by becoming physically, they're moving to, they're too tense, they're using too much physical tension. Right. So if there's too much physical tension, you're gonna to get too much mental tension or more chance of having mental tension as sure. well. So even working through simple things like some breathing exercises, relaxing, stretching before you go on the field, it helps relax the brain as well. So it's, it's looking at the, the direct correlation between what the body is doing and what the brain is doing. Okay. But my world on psychophysiology is I'm actually specifically measuring brainwave activity and how stressed someone is, how relaxed someone is, and how you can control that. So I suppose it's the, it's the measurable, the tangible side of the, of the mental spectrum. Right. You have psychology, which is all very important and probably tens of thousands of pages have written 
more are written on the psychology because sure. um, particularly in, in sports like golf, yep. all the books um, written there about positive psychology and absolutely it's very valid but there are plenty of people that do that area. So I specialise in this niche field of psychophysiology, looking at the measurable way that you can control your brainwave activity. Love it. Right. Scary, hey? Let's... Should have measured Nick's brain. Let's get... You measure it. There's no scale. <laughs> um, I think we should go straight into some questions. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with the questions that have been submitted on the teaser on YouTube, okay. so, bum, 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 if I don't hash this up. So, Leon, what sort of mental preparations can a player do with regards to tournament play, even if the player doesn't get to play that often due to distance or financial constraints? Yeah, great. It's a massive question, that. Um, I think the thing that comes to mind straight away is, is exactly what we're doing here, is the use of media as well. Right, okay. The fact we are talking to people around the world perhaps, and um, everyone is either at home or at work, and... If you are at work, good job, by the way. So, I This will be safe that. for work. That, I mean, this is mental training, but, yeah, you're um, good I would say, look at using the media and medium that are out there to either interact with other people, so you're listening, this is a form of training, uh, it could be, as, as I said before, looking um, at the layout. You could be looking on YouTube videos. Of, right. Um, I, I imagine oh, paintball right. nowadays with drones and things, there's a lot more yeah. video content of, of... Yeah, I mean, there's, some, there's actually some really um, cool software called Guns Up where you can create a virtual field layout and walk through that online. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I used it on the Barcelona layout, did a video on it, and we'll do it on subsequent layouts as the seasons progress. And that's, that's exactly, I think, answer this question, that you don't need to be there on the field. You can get familiarity with the layouts, right. the visual side. So you're avoiding the uh, unexpected. It could be, as I said earlier, you could be going onto Google Earth and looking at where the tournament's going to be, what's, where's your hotel right. going to be. Interacting with teams, like we're interacting on a... On a world audience like this at the moment there could be um a private group that you sit with your team and go through workshops and talk about what is everyone going to be doing so um it's it's not always about spending the money and obviously there is the time there's the problems of distance and, and finances as well we all on budgets but i think media is probably the easiest way of looking at videos i think what you're providing here as a service of, of knowledge i think is a, is exactly what people are needing to get that information, interacting. Also with teams, if you have teams that aren't all in the same geography, bringing yourselves together online and actually saying, okay, let's, let's talk about it. Let's actually have that time together. And, um, and also going through exercises of, I think being quite ruthless on your own performance as well, of actually, how many of you actually journal your performance? Actually, how many of you write down what your performance, how, it is, how it's going? Is, are you... You, you have strengths in some areas, weaknesses in some areas. Where's your physical fitness? Where's your technical game? Are you happy with all of your equipment? All of these things is the, is the whole aspect which creates the player. So as a mental coach, the success of what we're doing within mental training depends on you attending to all the other areas. If you have doubts right. in some of your equipment or... Um, you don't know what your travel arrangements are, or you don't know what your role is within the team, or, or many other areas. Sure. That's going to affect all your physical fitness. Sure. That's going to affect your mental game. So it's not just the visualize myself winning the next tournament. Oh, it's not that easy? Unfortunately oh, not. Shoot. And it's actually a very small part of it. Oh. It's actually the preparation that okay. you do around. So I think the question there was about the, the um, limits of distance Correct. and the financial limits as Correct. well. Correct, yeah. I think we are in an age now with uh, online media where we can work as a team together, we can yep. access resources, um, and there are a lot of training and drills that we can do from home. You don't have to be traveling around the world to get become a better player. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of teams I know have, you know, the WhatsApp groups, the, yep. you know, Facebook Messenger groups, etc. You can do the field walkthroughs you can watch you know tutorials etc um and develop that way i think one of the one of the, th the things that i wasn't expecting you to answer with was the equipment side of things mm -hmm. yet it's so obvious you know we all know those players who you know always have a, an issue with their marker 
always struggle because you know they they're missing a b or c never change their batteries whatever it may be and you know there's such simple obvious things that can be attended to mm. that people literally overlook and it's having it's just the word you talk about other people on our we all know other people and that just as you're saying that made me think you also need to have the trust and knowledge in your team as well and supporting your team it's, yes. yes it is your own performance but it is having that opportunity of identifying so-and-so always has the problem yeah. with the batteries. Okay, how can we as a team help address that before the next tournament? Correct. Because you need to have, this is a team sport, you need to have that confidence in that person next to you as well. Yeah. So yes, it's, I touched briefly before about talking about journals. I think sure. having that journal about your own performance, um, but I think looking as a team where you are performing and underperforming and being ruthless about it as well. Um, I think when I've worked in the past looking with the special forces in, in very hostile environments, yes, it is their own personal discipline, their own personal admin, but it's the implicit trust of what the person next to them is going to be doing as well. Right. And it's a little extreme, but it is, you want to go onto that field knowing that you trust the person next to you and having that, as you develop as a team, having that very honest conversation as if you need to help and support someone. It's not always being critical. Yes. It's about how you can help support someone else and their weaknesses. There will always be the strengths and the weaknesses, but I think it's being ruthless about it as how well. You can, and how I you think, can build. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Um, I think there are also the home drills from the technical side, and perhaps I'll put this question back to you, that it's not always about going out to the tournaments and traveling and spending the money. Sure. What are the home drills? That, you know, how much within the sport are people working on their physical drills as well. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly, there's certainly areas that you can look at. You know, you can do, you can do some practice drills, snap shooting in the mirror, et cetera, to get familiar with what profile you show when you come out, et cetera. Um, you know, back in the day, I remember when shooting fast was a skill, rather as in ramp mm -hmm. mode wasn't an option, We'd actually, I'd actually have a spare trigger frame that I would just practice on, yeah. left-handed whilst watching TV. Yep. Um, I, you know, and I think a lot of, a lot of guys, a lot of the younger generation of players do sit there with their markers, but they're so fast anyway because of video games, etc. They're actually quite sharp in that respect that you know we didn't always have the luxury of in my generation. Yeah, and I think just on that on that home practice, I've just seen someone this last weekend, um, so a few days ago win a world cup in a particular in a discipline of clay target shooting and i saw a video of him maybe four months ago online right working through all his basic drills but in slow motion right and i think the other thing is to, to understand it's not about always trying to progress forward what's the next best thing i can do sure it's about sometimes attending to what your basics are right have you tied your laces so you're not going to trip over <laughs> as an example yep. but this guy yep, he, he was he was doing all his drills and disciplines in slow motion so maybe right. you know, within paintball you know is you can your trigger work be perfected it's yeah. not just about no, so there, i think there are there are things that we can look at within our basics and we always like the ego part of getting better at the more extreme end but actually how often do we attend to what's on the basics of our it, performance i mean that that certainly holds true with paintball in that everybody wants to learn how to you know run slide dive into their bunker okay. yeah but the reality is nobody puts enough time into the breakout phase where you spin and shoot and you can get you know an easy kill mm. off the break well without and I, having to run and i think a few years ago it's going back about 10 years ago i was working with the u.s olympic team and we were in texas in north texas and it was it was warm but very very dry right and these are quite young athletes and in their early 20s and I noticed the performance was great in the morning, but by the time we got to the afternoon, that um, performance was dropping off. Everyone was starting to get lethargic and right. just taking more breaks. And I realized they were all dehydrated. Sure. And these were Olympic athletes. You yeah. expect them to do that yeah. to me as a basic. So it doesn't matter how good your equipment is. <laughs> it doesn't matter the most amazing marker that you've got. If you're dehydrated, your performance is going to go down. Your mental and visual performance will decrease. So Absolutely. that's what I mean about the basics. And I think some of the questions we've had put to us already is, what is the preparation that can be done? And it's don't neglect your basics. Sure. Um, have you got spare batteries or whatever you need? You know, yeah. Are you hydrated? Have you made the sensible choices on nutrition? Because these were athletes I was working with on the US Olympic team 
but they were the most basic thing about hydration they wow. were neglecting and it was catastrophic to their performance luckily okay. it was this was a training week we were doing right but it was just you can't take the those basics for granted so i wow. think it's it's if anything comes from what we talk about here today is is to revisit what are the fundamentals that make you a good player to the level you're at at the moment sure yes you need to move forward and learn new skills and develop new skills but also um look at what the basics are and that's why um i think one of the questions we've had is about pre-tournament preparation the hydration and nutrition are essential yeah, it's not absolutely. just turn up on the day slightly hung over but you're going to start that day with a bottle of water sure. and a bag of crisps it's actually what are the sensible choices you can make the day before about travel so you're yeah. not tired sometimes you'll be staying in a hotel what food do you want to have? If you're aware at a hotel, you're not going to be cooking your own food. So can you take your own food? Yeah. Hydration, as we've always already talked about, making the sensible decisions of this is the time you normally like to go to bed. This is the time you like to get up. How long is it going to take you to drive to where the tournament is as well? Of course. So, and this whole, I think what in, in the question here, um, I think it's, was it Tristan? Yeah, I was just gonna just gonna throw one of Tristan's questions at you actually. Okay, let's go through it. So, um, so, question on YouTube from Tristan. Love to know some more about um, preparation pre-tournament. He said I played on a team that practiced consistently, scrimmaged well, and had odd performances each event. We would defeat the teams that won and took second, and be utterly demolished by the teams that would lose most of their matches. Help. Hmm. Okay. How um, do you tackle that? It's all, I think this is where you need to understand it's your own processes. So if I just go over that last sentence again, we would defeat the teams that won and took second and be utterly demolished by the teams that would lose most most of their matches. I think what we need to be careful of is, is being so focused on the outcome. Right. Okay. You, and with the outcome being the win result, or lose. the win or lose, yeah, the binary, sure. the binary part of win or lose. Now, right. yes, you know that if you go, you've got a match and you're against someone that's higher in the league than you, or lower in the league, or reputation they're a great team or not such a good team. Yeah, there's an expectation of what your performance is going to be going into that. Okay, I think my perspective on all of this is to make sure that we look just at processes. Okay, and so what is what are the fundamental processes? your own processes and the processes of a team that make you good at the level that you're at. Yes. I think we can sometimes focus so much on we can be challenged by that good team and we, we're looking at the outcome and we really want to be beating that team, but then maybe that slightly less able team beats us yep. because we just made that assumption we're going to win and you've almost eased off as well. Yeah. Um, and then, so, yeah. So I think looking at... What are, what are the processes that get you to where you are? And I think in all the professional team sports that I've looked at, it's understanding for everyone, the breakdown, as they call it. What, mm -hmm. you know, when you start a game at the break, what is your process that you do? Sure. And you want to be excellent at that. Then what are the next move, you as an individual or as a team move? Are there strategies that you do? And it's looking at your processes. And I'm very much of the philosophy in all of my teaching that... Um, it's not just about we need to win this one or why are we losing and the frustration about the outcome because that's the binary win or lose. Sure. It's how well can we, can we improve what's happening on that break? Yes. So if you're going to give that, let's say, if you're rating it one out of ten, you gave yourself a six, well, how could we turn that six into a seven or an eight? What could we do next time to improve the quality of that break? Yeah. So you're always, you'll see me when I'm coaching, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this a lot. I sort of have these imaginary dials that I'm turning of improving. You're always refining okay. your processes so that it doesn't actually matter if you're against that, that better team or that less able team. It's actually about constant refinement of your processes as a team. Your focus should be on the working of those processes, not about we need to beat yeah, this great I'm, team or this... Yeah. Um, and. I'm always asking people to take the emotion out of, as much as possible, the emotion out of the performance. and Because the outcome happens at the end of the day. That's your yes. enjoyment as you're driving home or you're traveling home at the end of the weekend. That's the outcome. Focusing on that outcome throughout the weekend typically is going to be a recipe for disaster because you're focusing on something away from your processes. And it's your processes that create that outcome. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Does, there, does that make sense? It does make sense. Is there ever a point... So, um, to kind of 
help put it into a paintball perspective. Sure. The first process in any match will be the breakout. Mm -hmm. Where you are, is there a process pre-breakout? As in, is it the mental state, okay, when 10 seconds is called, mm -hmm. putting yourself in the correct mental state for the breakout, which mm. would be the next process. Mm. The breakout phase, where you have a role within the team during that phase. Mm -hmm. You might your role might be to shoot someone, your might role might be to make a particular bunker mm -hmm. alive mm -hmm. or a hybrid of the two. Mm -hmm. Um and anything else okay. <laughs> vaguely so related. I think one of the dangers and one of the traps that people would fall into is they get themselves too pumped up. Right. Okay. And they approach it in too much of a a physical um getting themselves all psyched up and pumped up. Yeah. It's not it's not a good way to have a good mental game now. Okay. So, yes, in that 30 seconds beforehand, once the final decisions are made, you um, you perhaps want to be just running through in your mind uh, what your strategies are going to be. So yeah. it's a bit of visualisation. Now, yeah. one of the things with visualisation is when you visualise something in your brain, what happens? It changes your brainwave activity. Visualisation actually increases more of a relaxed state of mind. Okay. So... Um, you can use this as a way of controlling any nerves that you might have. So okay. you're running through your plans. Um, but it is understanding it's not just get yourself psyched up, let's go, let's make a hard physical run. It's about bringing yourself down in control. So taking those few breaths, giving yourself that quiet space. Hopefully there's no panic amongst the team of the final decisions. Sure. What needs to happen. But it is, you can yep. be running through, this is the breakout that I want to happen. This is, this is what I'm going to do. This is my move. You can run through that. And it should actually, those last 20 seconds should almost be a moment of calmness. Right. Okay. Because your action, it's mental and physical calmness because then you're ready to react to the start of the game in a much more controlled manner rather than being frantic, frenetic flies running around, you know, oh, are we ready? Are we ready? And then suddenly yeah. you're off. You're not in a good state of control at that point. Now, be honest here. Those last 10 seconds, are they calm or are they panicked? Comment. Comment and tell us. Because I, I know what the answer is. Mm. It's not calm. I no, and I saw, I saw that. The, the, yeah. Was it the Millennium Cup? Yeah. yeah. And, and it was really interesting observing that and how often there are some decisions, some last call decisions that are made in yes. those last moments. And I would say, could those decisions be brought forward a bit? Like, and I know in between games you need, to yeah. be, you need to be changing things. But yeah. just to have that moment of, yes, there's high energy. Yeah. Yes, it's physical. Sure. But trying to look just for that, that short moment of, mm. like, we're ready. You feel in control. Part of that is it will give you the confidence as well. But if the game starts, the match starts, and you're still halfway through a discussion with someone on your team. Yes. That's not good. No. You're not focused was... on your task of what you're about to do. And I think, interestingly, it's not good for you or for them. No, no. So it's double detrimental. So and double this, is a, this is where, as a, as a team... It needs the team needs to evolve. It's not just the individual player. Right. It's understanding the processes of this is how we have discussions. Yeah. This is the time when we have discussions, and this is when we don't have discussions. And in paintball, I think that one of the biggest hurdles is actually broaching that subject without sounding a knob. Yes. <laughs> it's 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 in there the is, sense of you know. Yeah, and this is the leadership that this is yeah. where the, you need. There has to be the leadership that comes from it. And you're going to have different. Strengths, you're going to have the very quiet yes. people, the very outspoken Correct. people. Yep. And the way some people are not the, the, the most eloquent communicators and the way they may say something may affect yeah. someone more painfully than what they actually meant. Yes, absolutely. So I think this is also where a team needs to understand the different personalities as well. There, there's no blueprint where I can them. say, yeah. this is how it's going to be. I think yeah. it's actually understanding as a team and yes. for someone to say please don't say this to me in the 10 seconds before we start. I understand it, and I'll try and improve my game next time. Yeah. But yeah. making that comment 10 seconds to me totally distracts me. And I think as a, as a team, it's understanding the environment when you can improve that. And a lot of that is off the field as well, sort of in, yes. in your practice days as well. Yes. Question from uh, Johnny Lee from The Wraiths. How can you keep your mind focused and yourself motivated to keep playing at a high level or want to push higher. So, so this is I take it over as more of a season, more of a career. Right. Level. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this Rather is kind of. Um, I think it's 
lot of these questions sometimes come across as, is there a quick solution to this? And I think a, a generalization would be, this is a long-term view mm. on how to evolve yourself. I think if I'm reading into this as, as, as the long-term view, is you can't expect to be at the peak of your game long term as well and what okay. i mean by that is you need to manage it within a season okay and understand you will have peaks and troughs so okay. i've i've had the opportunity and uh, good good fortune to train two olympic gold medalists yeah their performance the following year was terrible Oh, okay. They didn't maintain that winning Olympic right. performance all the okay. way. So, so, but that's just an extreme example. So within a season, I would actually be mapping out where the times are that you're wanting to peak for the important tournaments. Right, okay. There are times, I think, um, there's a second part of the question, keep motivated to playing at a higher level. There are times where you can just feel that you are working so hard on your drills and performance that it, it becomes so mundane, you lose the pleasure for it as well. Right. And there are times where I say, Put, put all your kit away for a month, two and weeks. I, and I think take a lot a break, of... Take up fishing, whatever yeah. it might be, but you can't yeah. be pushing because you're looking so yeah. much at the details, so much that it the pleasure, the, the pleasure get, gets taken away from that. Absolutely. And I think sometimes you need to look at what the structure of a season is and say, yeah. uh, typically, what's the competitive season? How many months is that over in paintball? Uh, I mean, for, for probably 10 now. Okay. So, and you look through that, what, what are the landmark events in there? There are going to be some little smaller events and that's yeah. probably building to others. So it's not expecting your performance to peak at that high level all the way through the season. Okay. And there's probably going to be six weeks somewhere in there where there are no tournaments happening. Correct. As well. Yeah. And so immediately off the back of one tournament, once you've had your debrief, you may then decide to not play for three weeks as well. Yeah. So what was interesting about Jonathan's question before was, um, how do you remain motivated as well? You need to remain hungry yep. to do this as well. And sometimes you can be analysing and looking at the detail of your performance for so long that you fall out of love with it as well. And therefore your motivation decreases. So yes, you can set your, your goals of... So we talked earlier about looking at your performance, rating it one to 10. Yeah. So let's say you've got a tournament one month and a tournament next month. You might assess your performance and give yourself, regardless of what the outcome was, give yourself that assessment of what can I improve? What would I like to improve for the next month? What would the team like to improve for the next month? So we've got that short window. Yeah. And we're taking, again, we're taking out the whole binary of success and failure. We won, we lost. I like that. We're looking at the, at the micro parts of the refinements, either within your own game and the team game. So that can keep you motivated because it actually gets excited, exciting because it's saying, great, even though we won, look, we could have done this better. Mm. Or even though we lost, we had great processes so, in this. We yeah. did this well. So you can look at how you manage that tournament to the tournament. But I would caution anyone to try being cautious of being at the peak of their game throughout an entire season because the mot it can be very tough to do that. The motivation can wane. Now, if we take a, if we take a shorter term view, so over a day's performance, mm. um, how do you, how does fatigue affect things? So we've got a question from the team that Jonathan plays for, Harrogate Race. What does fatigue do to your mind when long days of playing in our, in the afternoon compared to playing in the morning. Yeah, I think and I think we waste and and many things we waste a lot of mental energy. Right, right. So I would say you think of your brain like a battery. Okay. And you wake up in the morning hopefully with a full battery. And yep. there are certain things which are going to burn more mental energy through the day than okay. others. So obviously we're wanting to contain that mental activity or the mental energy for the actual performance in the match as well. Yeah. And I think conversations like this is that we talk about how do you improve your performance on the field but the area that's neglected is actually planning what you do off the field right so this is what i talk about competition management yeah rather than okay we're playing we're playing a match at you know 10 o'clock 11 o'clock and then we're not back on until two o'clock yeah actually plan what do you do between the 11 o'clock and the two o'clock are you just going to sit down in the tent and and have some bad burgers or something yeah it, are you, do you hey, actually just want to drive off the property and, you know, or go to your car yeah. and just relax? Yep. But that should all be planned out. I think we put so much effort into planning what we do in the match. You know, we're all going to meet 20 minutes beforehand. We'll be ready to go. Yep. We've then got the match. Okay, we've now got two hours. I'll see you back here in two hours. Sure. You're, you're actually not planning what you're going to do with that mental energy in that 
sort of negative time, as I would call it. In so that, this yeah. is the competition management of where you should be taking your own food. You should have all your podcasts and music downloaded that you like listening to. Someone that I was at a tournament with a couple of weeks ago, I said, bring your trainers along because I know that she likes to go for a run. So I said, right, go for a run in between. Take your mind off there it. Is. Don't sit down unless you need Fishing to. Don't, don't waste mental energy talking about lots of other team dynamics at that moment. That's for during right. the week when you're not competing. Don't go and watch too many other people playing. Big, big kind of everybody. So CPPS is the biggest domestic paintball event in the UK. Mm. Whenever teams have breaks in the lower division, they typically walk up to the elite field, watch the elite teams mm. play. And there are things you can learn, but I would also say you can watch a lot of that on YouTube during the week. Um, be careful about giving up too much of your, your mental and don't turn it into a spectator sport. Right, as if you're a participant. Absolutely, because yeah. you start, you're, you're giving up your mental energy and by the time you get to that, that, that match that's happening at three o'clock in the afternoon or two o'clock, yeah. is that you are fatigued because you haven't eaten well, you haven't rested well and you've been watching lots of other games going on the whole time. Whereas actually you could have done a lot better to take yourself back to your car, have a 90 minute nap, listen to some music, eat some good food and then be ready for your next game. Always define the purpose of why you're there for that day. Right. Are you there to watch the elite teams or are you there to put the best performance in for your team? Neither is right or wrong. If you want to go along and watch the elite teams, that's fine. But very difficult to do both. If, when it comes to, I like the defining the purpose. Mm. How, obviously, you know, some will pay lip service to that. How important is it to make that commitment by, do you write something down? What do you do? You know, going back to the, the journal notion and keeping track of, you know, what you do, how you perform. No, I, I, this I isn't do, a paintball yeah, commonality. I think having a journal and having a track record and actually physically writing it down, having a, a piece of paper and saying, this is the date, this is the event, this is the location, yeah. this is what the weather was, this is the time we got there, this is yeah. who was on my team. Keeping that as a good reference to go. I mean, back I to. think that that's actually that's actually really interesting. Sorry to mm. butt in the kind of the who's on my team part changes for a lot of teams. Mm -hmm. um, even you know at the highest level, you know, let's take Houston Heat, Edmonton Impact, San Diego Dynasty, three top professional paintball teams. They don't play the same five mm -hmm. every match mm -hmm. every point of every match of every event mm -hmm. it constantly evolves you know i mean rusty glaze the coach of dynasty would love information on that you know which five yield the greatest mental performance mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well as you know but you look at so many sports though that yeah. you are you are changing you look at in american football i mean how many people are actually on that team yeah hundreds you, you, you bring someone got a you bring you bring someone on who's a kicker yeah great <laughs> and yep, that's the fantastic so you, you know you change you change for that situation and there may yeah. be you may even learn within a team you've got some morning players and you've got some afternoon players i, I don't i'm just thinking there out are loud definitely and morning and afternoon there may be people that are, there may be people that are good coming from the back from the, what i would say the back foot that if you're losing you may have some people that are controlled attackers Yes. I, I'm just like, throwing no, it out. No, no, this is but I think so going good. the question on, on journaling is that yeah, keeping track of who's in the team, which games were played. Um, it's not necessarily the length of the grass on the field, but I like detail. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm very much this is one of the reasons I'm within an eight millimeter guy, Henry. Within um, <laughs> um, you know you put me off my stride. Nine and a trip. <laughs> um, um, Serious. Uh, that about measuring data. Yes. So within in my field of yes. psychophysiology, it's about it's measuring. Yes. You're measuring brainwave activity. You're measuring the physiological activity. The, with psychology, it's harder to measure. So I, I'm very much a data guy because then you can right. look at your own performance and say, this works well for me. It could be understanding your own nutrition. There's one of my athletes who've been looking at the macros, you know, looking at what percentages works well with him on the carbs, the proteins, and the fats. Right. So during the week, he's actually, um, he's a surgeon. Oh. And it's a very high pressure environment. And the okay. weekends, he's trying to compete to a high national level. Oh, okay. So it's managing what he needs for his food intake when he's doing uh, eight hours of surgery compared to if he's then competing on a Saturday morning. It is actually different for him. So it's understand, it goes back to what I was saying, awareness. And the two key yes. words that I say again and again in all my training is awareness and discipline. 
So awareness of your own performance, the best way to have that awareness is to keep some sort of journal. Don't get too hung up on it, but just have a notebook. Start by the date, the event, who's on the team, what the weather was like, and what the score was. It's the 3rd of April, by the way. And the weather it's is not an April dry. Fall. It's not yeah, an April this fall. Isn't. Yeah. <laughs> but I, mean, I think starting with that, just it's, it brings yeah. your awareness. Now, it, it, some of that information isn't going to be useful, but the fact you're going through, I felt very tired. You know, I have one, one person that he knows, he likes to be out of bed three hours before he competes. Weird. So if he's starting, if he's teeing off, say he's, he's a golfer, if he's teeing off at eight in the morning... I'm glad he, you clarified he was a golfer. I just, if he was a shooter, he's, he's wrong. Whatever it might so, be. So no, it's good. Okay. Crack on. But, um, but it's understanding, it's the procedure of... Yeah. If he's teeing off at eight in the morning... Yeah. He doesn't want to be getting up at 6.30, having breakfast at 7. Because yeah. he's got the whole, he's got the three-hour run-in of he's got to get up, have breakfast, be on the practice range, and then he's ready for the first tee. Yeah, of course. And That's the same thing with paintball. There's a certain time of you've got to be getting your equipment ready, you've got to be getting dressed. Generally, you wear clothes. Yeah, I, I would assume you're getting dressed. But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. And there, there are certain procedures yeah. you need to go through. And yeah, it's about I mean, being controlled. you've got to paint, yep. you've got to test the paint, you've got to... You got to chat rubbish to everybody else who chats rubbish. Okay, etc. If you have to, yeah. You know, there's a, there's so the social phase, um, etc. Mm. And it's you're you're absolutely right. Uh, depending so depending when your draw is, if you're playing one of the bigger events, you may have to eat prior to playing. You may choose to eat after playing. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a whole other topic. Yes. Because you really just want to have sustained energy throughout the day. You right. need to lose the concept of meals through the day. Done. I've lost it. No, done. Because it's about having that sustained energy. You have a meal, perhaps at the be- you have your evening meal, the morning meal, and then it's sustained energy through the day, and then you'll have something to eat afterwards. So it's okay to Don't s- make your way to the taco van at 11 o'clock in the morning. <gasps> yeah, I'm sorry. You know, Donna kebabs is not pre... pre- <laughs> no, that's not bad, but, but it is making sure you are prepared. So dried fruit and nuts, one of the easiest things to to okay. have with you if, if, if that agrees with you um, don't worry about having things like power you know I won't mention any names but sort of branded energy drinks just have some water okay. sometimes in the heat if, if you're wearing all that clothing and paintball you might want to add a few electrolytes in there right don't overcomplicate it but lose the concept of it's lunchtime it's midday I must eat because what happens if you're about to play at 11.30 or what happens if you've got a game at 1 o'clock Oh, do I eat before, afterwards? It doesn't I mean, matter. You just keep your energy going through. But it's all planned out ahead of time. Yes. And make sure you take with you your food that you want to have. So having some fruit is great. Okay. Having some, you know, some cereal bars you know, can be good as well. Even things like flapjacks. Whatever works for you. I'm a big flapjack um, fan, Or even keep way. your protein level high because the protein will keep your appetite down. So maybe just taking some, some chicken with you or something. Okay. Just, you, know, you can buy a chicken for... Some chicken, chicken not... A chicken, just to yeah, not, not, your pet, not your pet no, chicken on just, a lead. Just, just <laughs> here's the team, there, here's the team mascot. The... <laughs> um, Beatrice, but, but again, yes. I think for I should think paintball is is and for what I've seen, like many sports, people want to hear about the mental training because it's what can I do to improve my focus on the field. Yeah. And we can get into those sort of techniques and talks, but actually, the biggest improvement to your game is by controlling the activities you do off the field. Yes. Thinking about that 48-hour routine, what you do in the run-up to the first match. Right, okay. What you do, what you Really, what... is that far in advance? I would. I would just make sure it's planned and that you want to make sure that... Because some, some of the events I know are international. You need to fly, yeah. you need to travel. Yeah, yeah. Have you got the gas canisters with you or whatever you need to do? Or what's legal, what isn't legal? Yeah. Have you got that, spare that's markers? That's actually highly topical. So Just shout out to all the people who struggled to coming back from Barcelona. <laughs> so, but it is these things you think about that if there are, you know, are you in yeah. a car? Are you at an airport? Are there problems? So the reason I say forty eight hours is because maybe you want to buy your food forty eight hours before. Yeah. Yes, you need to plan your travel. Yeah. Have you fixed that broken marker from the previous weekend? Have you just tested it, rather than, or whatever it might be? Yeah. You're trying to reduce the surprises, and that's the biggest way that you can actually improve your performance on the field is by being in control of the field. You're in a much, going back to what we said right early on, uh, on on this video is about the different mental states, is the high performance doesn't come from that frenetic, stressed, intense sure. thinking. It's actually being in control. I was okay. talking to you earlier about this now. I used to really enjoy old martial arts movies and 
the the older guy who just moves very calmly and carefully and he's got the he's the martial arts expert compared to the guy that comes in the beard twiddler the beard twiddler yeah, yeah. a little bit yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to grow up <laughs> But it is that it's that calm, composed. You can react to a situation, and in when I work with people in a variety of different high pressure situations, it's about remaining calm when under pressure. So Clive Woodward in rugby mm -hmm. has the expression "thinking correctly under pressure." Okay. Teacup, and that is applicable to so many areas of life: paintball, work, whatever it might be. That it is thinking correctly under pressure. I'm going to throw you another question. Go for it. Um, this is from Nico, Big Nicky from um, Seattle Uprising. Oh, let's go. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. His question is regarding something his friend Tim Brusselback, who now plays for Impact, calls a performance blackout. At times, when coming back into the pit after a point, I can hardly recall the details of the match past the first and last moments of it. Mm -hmm. Or in other cases, different points almost seem to blend together. Mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions or exercises to help my mental endurance during long adrenaline-packed matches so that I can be of more help to my team? Mm -hmm. Presumably in providing yeah, I mean, there's a lot better of things. information. He's, he's touched on a lot of different things there. So... Um, sort of the blackout side that you talk about, our brain, uh, the memory works actually when we're in a more relaxed state of mind. Okay. It's the more visual awareness. When we are operating in a more high adrenaline environment, we go more into the uh, conditioned responses of how we're going to perform. So you, you actually just actioning performance without consciously having necessarily that awareness about the performance. So memory, when you're recalling what's going on, is actually more about uh, when you are more relaxed. Okay. Okay. Um, the other part that came to mind is on the second part of the question, which is, I would say, more about the breakdown of the processes rather right. than looking at the whole, the whole game and being, I think he described, being more useful to the team within that. Yeah. Is actually look at, look at the, what I'd call the processes of the breakdown of saying, to make this, so it's, first you're having team awareness, visual awareness of what your, where your teammates are and what the next play is, should yeah. we say. But what, do you, what is your next... What's your next procedure? What is your next process you're going to do? And how do you do that to a level of excellence? Okay. It's taking, it's not, we need to win as a team. What can I do? Sure. It's, this is our, this is our situation. What is the next strategy that we do? So it's, it comes back to my, my, my sort of philosophy on all of this is, is look at refining your processes and going process to process. So your own performance on the field for an individual game may be broken down into 10 different moves. Potentially, sure, could be more than that, sure. But you're looking at um, from the breakout through to your different moves on the field. You're looking for 10, 20 excellent processes, and being aware of those processes, making those decisions. You can't be, you can't be perfecting process fifteen while you're still working on the breakout at two and three. Right. So right. not worrying further along the line. It's about thinking, what can I do in this immediate situation? Let's say there are 10 processes mm -hmm. that happen in the average paintball game. If there is such a thing as an average paintball game. Because there probably isn't. Mm -hmm. Something happens that you're not expecting. And it stops you going from... You're in the middle of process 8. Mm -hmm. And you can't do process 9. Mm -hmm. So process 8A comes well, up. That comes down to team training. Right. And that's okay. also trust on your teammates as well. Assuming there's other people on the field. Sure. Um, that that is also it's the communication. Okay. You're changing strategy. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's an ever evolving. Oh, absolutely. And and you will. I should think every single game, your your original plan isn't always happening. And but it is. It's the communication. Yeah. I would say that what you're making sure when you move to plan A B. Yeah. Or also eight B. Yeah. That the persons left and right of you know that it's now plan eight B. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. I <laughs> because mean, that's where the breakdown can the problems can happen. Time info. Yeah. And it's, so yeah. it's how you communicate. And having seen some of these matches as well, mm -hmm. is it's what is the best way to communicate with other people on the field as well? Is it how are you going to shout loudly so that the next person can hear you? But what is the clear way to communicate? You're not going to have a long sentence discussion you probably have your key words within a team which define strategy moves or you should do he's there yes is that right it could be but it's yeah it's, it's that but it's it's um it's i think it's that communication but when sure. when plans do change it's making sure this isn't just an individual sport it is yes you want your own performance to be good but you need to have the total trust that 
for that strategy to work that the others do. So this is probably, again, it's the stuff that you need to work on away from the field is how do we communicate a change in strategy, whatever that might be. That's sure. where you as the technical yes, coach absolutely. is the expert. But it's what is the best way to do that because it is making sure it's, it's a, rather than a panic decision, it's just a clear decision. Who makes that decision? This is what yeah. we do. Now, you might need to make your, you need to make a change in your own performance, but that's based on the yeah, trust and the, skill of your game. I mean, a good, uh, a good example of that in a paintball context is you have a game plan to shoot the snake runner off the break. You happen to miss that snake runner and they make it alive in mm -hmm. for whatever reason. So somebody on the field then becomes accountable for the task of containing stroke, attempting to eliminate mm -hmm. the snake player. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a case of all five guns switched to the snake. It's a... Um, it's a pre-discussed plan of action if they happen to get through that lane. Now, you know, the the original plan might be we'll shoot the snake off the break, mm -hmm. then we'll take the snake. Obviously, if they make it in alive, you might not be able to take the snake until you've contained or eliminated them. So, yeah. This is where you have your playbook. This is where you have the playbook of, of what your strategies are. And you look at different, you know, American footballers, classic yeah. for this. You know, there's a massive playbook. Massive. And that's very unique to that team and Correct. is treasured like gold. Yes. And a paintball team should have a playbook. And it, the reason I think a lot of people don't do it, it takes effort. It's very boring. We want to go out there and Just shoot, run shoot, and shoot people. Run and shoot people. Yeah, absolutely. But actually to sit down and think, okay, what are all the different ways that we could start this game? Yep. What are all the different plays? And it will take a long, long time to get this playbook there together. Are, there are players out there, though, who absolutely thrive on that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's not laborious to them. It's actually enjoyable. Mm. You know, and it, I think a certain aspect of that is they feel more in control. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I embrace and acknowledge that part of the process. There are others who are excellent at playing what's in front of them. Okay. And, you know, if you gave them a strict, too strict a job of do this... If something else happened, but you told them to do that, they'd go, well, you just told me to do that. That's just, un that's understanding the team dynamics as well. And it's it, understanding it is. everyone it's, has yeah, their different mental part of processes their, and what they like to work with. mental makeup. And, and I think yeah. more time being spent on understanding the team dynamics is really important. Every, yes. Some people are more, when they're under pressure, become very vocal and physical. Other people, when they're under pressure, probably become much more introverted and much quieter. Sure. Well. They don't communicate as much. Sure. And it's just simply understanding that. Um, and uh, yeah, I am going to. And I think with, from seeing the questions coming in here, I'm sure we could we could be doing more sessions on this. So I think what I would encourage is people to carry on sending questions into you. And there's no reason why. Um, yeah, we will do another. Absolutely. We'll do a Skype session because I think this is looking at lots of different questions coming through here. Is um, absolutely um, one more okay. from Big Nicky mm. again. What are your thoughts on visualization? I always try to visualize my paint going through my intended lane and breaking on the opposing runner off the break. Mm -hmm. I feel this has worked well for me. However, when things do not go as planned, I sometimes feel I mentally put all my eggs in one basket and may have missed an opportunity that I didn't expect. I think that's a very valid... Yeah, it is. I'm not entirely clear on the, on the second part of the question on... Miss, missing the opportunity. Um, as I think in... it's, it's a, I think what he's getting at there is he feels that sometimes he's too tunnel visioned mm -hmm. on that one task. Oh, okay. And could have had a better opportunity. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think the, I was thinking the first part of the question about the visualization. Sure. Is yes, mental rehearsal and, and running through what you want the outcome to be. Certainly, it wouldn't be detrimental. There are certainly positives from it. As I said earlier, when you go through visualization, it actually causes, it creates more of a relaxed state of mind. Right, okay. Going through visual, visualization increases what we call the theta brainwave, which is a more relaxed brainwave activity. So you're almost encoding to your subconscious, this is what I want it to look like now. Sure. Is it actually the paint hitting the person? I'm not so much oh. talking about that visualization. Yeah, that's, uh... It's more about what is, the, what, what is my move? Because once you pull the trigger, yeah. That's gone. Yeah. That's done. So it's a, is it the mechanics of I'm set up ready at the start gate, I spin and 
I spin smoothly, mm -hmm. my gun's level, mm -hmm. that type of visualization. Yeah. On your processes. It's, it's the ego, it's, it's fun, it's cheap. the ego, but it is the yeah. ego thing to see the paint splatter on someone else. Yes. But that part's actually not in your control. Because it's done. Uh -huh. you've, you've shot the once, ball. Once the, that's the last part of you that's in, in control. You're not in control of what comes out the end of the barrel. So would that be classified as improper visualization? Zen painful. Is it improper? No, it's, it's, it's not detrimental. I okay. wouldn't say it's improper at all. I think if, if one of the things he said, he, he, it made him feel good about it. Well, yeah. that, that's great. You, know, yeah. even, you can even say some, certain things of placebo. Well, right. placebo is not necessarily a bad thing if it makes you feel good. Sure. Um, I'm not saying that is placebo, but I, w I would say the visualization, um, first, it helps keep you relaxed. It's looking at your processes working through what, visualizing your processes of a particular move, not enjoying just purely the outcome, which is right. more the ego, right. that's how I'm going okay. to feel. Part of it is beneficial, and if to that individual it helps them feel good, fine, keep doing that. But I think if you're going to really, truly the benefit, process. it is actually visualizing and looking, running through your processes. Right, okay, so it is the, the mechanics of getting that shot off. Yeah the break efficiently. Mm. The mechanics of making moves between bunkers. Mm. The mechanics of being in a bunker and then launching and going and bunkering in opposition. You'll get more out. more value from your visualization time from doing mm. that, I like believe, it. is my and someone may dis I'll disagree with that. But I think you're you're working on coding your processes into your brain rather than just enjoying the ego outcome of the pain hitting someone else. I like it. I like it a lot. Unbelievably, we've chatted for an hour. Look at that, time flies. To wrap it up for this session, can we get one piece of advice slash homework mm -hmm. that individuals can work on mm. and one piece of advice slash homework that teams can work on just to start on this, okay. you yeah. know, Well, they will be, I'll keep, I'm going to keep it really simple. Like the it. piece of advice is going to be the same. Oh. And it's not me cutting corners. <laughs> I'd like everyone, because I think, you know, as I said before, people like to look at the focus on the field. I'd actually like everyone to work on, think about what your 48-hour routine could be. Okay. What would, what would your processes be from the 48 hours before the whistle or the horn going, whatever it is that starts a game? Yeah. What are the processes from checking your food, checking the equipment to your travel time? to even that last more intense 20 minute timer, five minute timer, three minute timer. What are the processes that need to happen? And you can micromanage this at this stage and then you want to strip out the important, what's important there. Right. So you can okay. do that on an individual basis. Okay. But I think then also as a team, wouldn't it be great if you were all operating on the same time scale? Oh, phenomenal. Rather than you want to get something done at this two hours before, but you've got someone else in the team that likes to do it one hour before. Wouldn't it be great if so? I would look at your individual processes. You can have a lot of fun with that. Okay. And I think the competition management of the other thing, and the extra, would be think about what it is you can do in between games as well, in between matches. Okay. Rather than just passing time, what could you do with purpose? Everything should always be done with purpose. The, most of that purpose should be about relaxing. Once so, you're, say, once you're, so it's not yodeling? If that's relaxing be might not relax others could be i mean <laughs> but i would say right? that i would say to go away as exercise work on a 48 hour routine okay think about what your processes are what are the what are the best processes for the team as well that everyone and then negotiate that with the team do we agree these are good processes so meeting uh, equipment preparation strategy talks all of these things who's going to lead those sure um and then also decide okay if you have that time in between matches what are you going to use that, what are you going to do in that time are you turning it into a spectator sport and going to go and watch the pros? Mm -hmm. Are you going to use the time to rehydrate, eat, go to your car and listen to some music? Mm -hmm. um, there are so many things that need to happen. It just put, it popped into my mind, so I will say it. I've seen someone lose a world championship because they needed to go to the loo. They needed to go to the toilet during the competition. Wow. So it put, went into her routine. <laughs> wow. 20 minutes before she was up and playing, then she needs to go to the toilet. So Always wash your hands. <laughs> It's um, even those. I don't want to over engineer it, but it, yeah. it'd be annoying to lose something because you are you've forgotten the basics. And going to the toilet is about one of the most basic things, isn't it? Just as a, it is. Yeah, it really is. I mean, just as a benchmark, I'm I'm also going to do the same. I will publish it on my Patreon as a as a public 
document for people to see and discuss because mm. I think it's a, an applicable, useful exercise for all. Yeah, and I think we can build some more questions from the patrons as well. Okay. And we can go through some other Q and A's and maybe look at some specific topics that we'll go through and actually go, maybe we'll sit down with a red pen and go through your 14 hour oh, routine. Oh, How about oh, that? Oh. I like getting the red pen out. I hope you've got a lot of ink. <laughs> so, no, most definitely. And obviously any future questions that you have, please post up on these videos. Henry and I will revisit this discussion platform. Um, and let us know how it let's went keep it going and forward. Uh, we'll, we'll improve it and get some more information really yeah it. and it, so, thanks for know, having me post up your questions yeah um if there are specific things that you wish henry to elaborate on please also post them up because we'd love to know yeah and do let us know your thoughts thank you for joining me thanks for having me very welcome see you soon